Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. All right. Well, I apologize, everybody. I think uh, we allowed opening a little bit late, so I uh, should have a few more people jumping on. But let's go ahead and get started. So first, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm the CEO uh, of Cliently. We are a sales engagement tool. And also, as you already heard from, Harsh Gupta, who's our COO and head of data science, and also has a background uh, of being a founder of his own company, uh, Proton Auto ML, uh, as well. And so what we'd like to go through today, guys, is just giving uh, everybody some insight into machine learning and how it's being used with sales campaigns today and how it can better your process overall. So let's first talk about the current process. So the current process that you'll see with BDRs and SDRs is really taking the focus and putting it on task. And so what that usually means is with a cadence or a campaign, you'll have several steps, an email, uh, wait a few days, another email, et cetera. And then you'll have tasks in between to make a call on a certain day or to do a LinkedIn connect, et cetera. So that's usually how people are sort of staying, uh, you know, sort of in front of what they need to do every day and understanding what their priorities are. And the other areas in terms of how they're using campaigns is they're using usually the best converting templates from a group. So not necessarily an individual, but you might have a group that works really great with a segment of software companies uh, or in a different industry or a different title. But let's talk about the problems. So with this current process, number one is the struggle to know the best next steps. So right now, if you're setting tasks, that's basically just telling you this is your next step. It's not telling you it's your next best step, but it's telling you it's your next step. And so the issue with that is you're not focusing on intent. And intent is really important because if you're putting your time uh, where it's somebody that's not showing uh, a reaction at that point or any type of engagement, it may be time wasted. And really what that comes down to is a reactive approach instead of a proactive approach. Either you're reacting to only people that are replying to you or you're just going through the motions and hitting the steps that are your task for that specific day. So let me pass it on to Harsh and have him give you a little bit more insight of how this can be solved with some different machine learning techniques. So one of the most important things that I think any anybody in the sales campaign, and we do, do this a lot at our own company, Cliently, and with the other businesses that we are associated with. So we need to treat every individual as an individual and not just as a group of people or as a segment of people. So only AI and machine learning can enable a one-to-one -one email that is highly optimized for that lead. And it can be based on the purchasing history of the lead or, of, or the prospect, the responses that the one responded in the past email campaigns, what, what their interaction was with our, with our company website, if they made us a call or not. And there's just so many variables and using all those variables, information about the leads prospects, we can create a one-to-one -one email campaign. And we really, so think of it, you go to a physical store, let's say I go to Best Buy tomorrow and I, I tell the guy that, look, I'm looking for a speaker. It needs to have this, this characteristics. And the guy will come up with many recommendations, which is very personalized. So that is the kind of personalized experience that we want to be giving to the leads, to the opportunities, so that they really feel that uh, you know them well, you understand them well, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing that, that is really important is that the behaviors, the human behavior is changing so constantly, so rapidly. One and a half years ago, I wasn't doing any online shopping. Today, I'm doing so much online shopping. So my behavior has changed. And only machine learning can really accommodate all those changes, can tailor the, the email messages, the, the kind of risk, the flow that you want to be having for them. And it takes into account the constant changing behavior without requiring any intervention from my side. It's all automated. Uh, two big examples of uh, hyper-personalized outreach approach. So one is personalized product, service and what should be the price of it. Now, everybody has a different, uh, some, some people are very ROI conscious, like they want the whatever price they're uh, paying, they really want to have a good value for it. Some people are very generous, they care more about the quality of the product. So everybody's different and we can really personalize that what product, 
we should be offering or what service we should be offering to a particular lead opportunity prospect and what should be the price of it so that it leads to the highest conversion possible the other big example is that we want to be using high impact email subjects line we want to be using the email bodies uh, the email templates that will really get us good results the best results and we want to be having different variants for different set of people we, we don't want to be like this is our best email template and we are going to shoot out this best email template to everybody no we need to have different variants and in in just 5 minutes from now we'll be discussing how to create different variants for different type of people i want to be talking about natural language processing uh when i'm talking about the email the natural language processing is a huge component in the ai so this is a very emerging field uh, you must have heard of open ai you must have even heard of the cortex ai so a lot of library spaces a lot of libraries are coming up and what nlp nlp is a branch of ai which actually extracts information from the text so think of any time you're having a chat with a company think of any time you're calling the company all that is being recorded and that's actually text conversation cannot be used as it is we use nlp to extract information out of it so today nlp is being used in so many aspects in sales uh, sales channels for example if you want to understand which subject line works the best what is the best email body which words we should be using and which words we should be avoiding in the email what type of email we should be sending out to what type of people all that can be easily done using nlp and we have seen so much uh, immense benefits out of that so last uh, last 6 months we've started using nlp in our outreach uh, channels in our cadence in our flows and we're helping many other companies do that do that as well and we are seeing immense uh, increase in the sales so I'm going to, you know, speak to you a little bit uh, of some more specifics of of what Harsh was just going over uh and how you can really use these specific types of words uh to personalize your messaging. So, you know, a couple of of cases for example are when you're hitting up a specific type of client. So in this example whether they're a passionate traveler, a gamer, a designer, a hobbyist, they should each be different. And that's even if some of those same people may be at the same company because what approach works with one will probably not work with the other and that's where it's so important to learn based on other dialogue that you're having with others that fit that same type or other dialogue you've had with that exact contact to realize how you should approach them to get the highest engagement rate and so really going back to what harsh was talking about just a moment ago on his last slide using those words to make sure it's tying to the impact that you're looking for it to have and so now i think i'd like to have harsh if you don't mind to go over a couple of real world examples of of how you could actually use this so so we've been discussing a lot about how to create the winning subject lines the winning emails and uh, there are a lot of platforms right now using open ai uh, for example conversion.ai for example jarvis.ai writesonic.ai where you provide uh, some input and they're going to be uh, giving you the the very good subject line the very good email for example let's say in this case uh, i'm using conversion.ai so i have this company product name best insurance just came up with the name uh what is this email about so look i'm not an english speaker so i wrote really bad english john i would like broken english by best insurance never regret it it's very simple plain english we take care of you no matter what john this is the best insurance policy in ohio now imagine uh Uh, creating a subject line out of this i have no idea i don't i don't do a lot of sales spencer is a sales guy i'm not the sales guy so i just put the input and now i'm getting recommended subject lines john buy this and never regret it want to finally get a good provider question mark never regret buying best insurance best insurance the right insurance for you this is the best insurance pol- policy in ohio so i can get a lot of recommendations from nlp and what nlp is doing is Uh, it is searching the whole internet it is finding out uh, the best subject lines and it is giving me the best subject lines based on the input that i am giving it to there is another example now as you all know that my english is not the best my grammar is not the best 
So tell us more about your product, leading insurance in US. We take care of you regardless of the unfortunate event. I just put out the inputs in there. And now you now now you, you cannot send this email to a new prospect, new lead, right? This would look so bad. Nobody's going to be replying to you. But look how open AI. So the conversion.ai is using open AI in the background. It's an open source library. Anybody can use it if they know Python. Uh, hello, do you know there is a company who has the best insurance coverage? Our process is fast, efficient, keeping the cost real low. In addition, uh, we take care of unfortunate events such as sickness, job loss, giving me such a good email template. Now that's really wonderful, right? I don't have to search on internet. What are the best email templates? I can get it using OpenAI platform. So uh, let me actually, oh, sorry, Harsh, let me go ahead and speak to a couple of, of ways to use this, uh, ways that we've used it in the past. So, you know, first off, we talked about everybody is different, right? And so Harsh was showing you, you know, a little bit about how you can create those emails if you if you struggle with where to start and, and how to finish those. But what you're able to do with machine learning uh, is to sort of look at different data out there and figure out what is going to be that person's trigger. And so in these examples, we're taking just one factor, but you can take many factors, but we'll, we'll keep it simple here. And we're just saying, okay, this person either lives in Ohio or they live in Los Angeles. And a usual email to a potential partnership might be something, hey, we want to build this partnership with you. And it doesn't feel as personal. And so what you can do with recommendations by AI, just for one example, is talk about the local weather of what's going on right then. So for example, if they're in Ohio and we know, hey, I see it's raining today where you are, hope you're staying, hope you're staying dry, they can look outside, see it's raining, and all of a sudden the email resonates. It feels like you literally just wrote that right in there even if you're using AI to make it feel that way and it was part of an automation. Same thing if they're in Los Angeles, hey, it looks like it's a beautiful sunny 85 degree day. And you can do other fun things around that because again, that's just one piece of information, but it helps you understand how much you can personalize and do that at scale. Uh, in these two examples, a seven and 6% reply rate respectively versus what it would usually potentially be a one or 2% or maybe even lower. And so talking about the words to use, the words to avoid, there we showed some really some things that help trigger people. Well, there's other words that we learn from machine learning based on other emails that have gone back and forth within your own company, within other data overall, what works and what doesn't. So for example, you know, some different words and phrases that we've seen work, let's do this. High on ROI, stakeholders, competitors. Now, yes, I'm a, you know, sort of I've been a VP of of uh sales and companies have been a director, et cetera. So I have learned a lot, I've experienced a lot. So I know that those work because they promote next steps. However, there's a lot of others that I, A, may not be thinking of, and B, your BDRs and SDRs definitely don't have the mindset to know what those words are. And so to be able to have them pointed out on demand or used on demand with machine learning is really important because this is literally the difference between sometimes a short and a long sales cycle or sometimes a deal and no deal. Some of the inverse in terms of the negative words or phrases, I'm not sure, let me get back to you on this, maybe, could, why, these are not very decisive, they're not pushing to the next step. Uh, and again, there's a lot of others that I probably have left out there, uh, whether I'm aware of them or not, that SDRs and BDRs probably won't be. And so if they have that sort of already in their Rolodex, uh, without them having to go through 15 years of experience to learn it, again, it makes the difference of getting an op or not, or a long sales cycle, short one, closing or not. So Harsh, let me pass back to you and you can get more into the into the details of uh, the mechanics of, of the different pieces of AI and machine learning. And by the way, uh, guys, we uh, analyzed our data. We've been doing a sales campaign for the last four years and we are right now working with 150 businesses. So we analyzed the data of every business we are doing with and our own data. And that is how we came up with these phrases and words which are leading to higher sales or which lead to a longer sales cycle. So everybody will have different words, of course, based on their sales campaigns. So now I want to be uh, talking about a little bit of automation in the email engagement. So think of it this way, uh, an email comes to you or a reply comes to you and you have no idea if it's a query, if it's a support, if it needs escalation, uh, is just appreciation or maybe they are saying bad things about your product. You have no idea. So, so you can actually be using uh, auto interpreter and 
and this is again you know going back to the nlp machine learning thing uh, we have to use those uh, those things to do this so now you have the automatic in incoming email and you have it automatically analyzed look this need this needs an Im immediate as escalation for example let's say somebody is uh, somebody is using your product and your product breaks down for that customer and then uh, you'll have that immediate escalation you'll know that email needs an immediate escalation and you'll create a, maybe a trigger on webhook zapier and you'll be notified immediately uh query again uh, you can prioritize like does it need immediate address or does it can i address it after 6 hours 8 hours the other big thing is uh, the auto drafting responses for customer emails now now we've seen this in our company a lot when the new sdrs and the bdrs join our company uh they don't know how to handle the objections they don't know how to respond to the to the responses so spencer spends uh, considerable time with them he walks them through look if you get this response then you reply to them this if you if you get this objection then you handle it this way you know imagine you had an auto drafting responses wherein uh, you had your previous data where you responded to those objections uh, those questions and you noted down uh, whether the person was happy or not and then using the machine learning you, can, you now you're coming up with automatic responses so when the sdr or the bdr is sitting in front of his computer in, in his front of his laptop there's an automatic draft response being generated uh, so that is uh, so helpful for the sdrs bdrs especially when they join the company new the onboarding is much easier uh the world is uh, the world is om omni channel uh, today i'm actually me personally i'm on facebook linkedin twitter instagram i'm on pinterest i'm on uh, i'm i'm even on tiktok now i'm on email and i have 7 8 emails so the world is becoming very omni channel now where do you reach out your customers do you reach them out on email linkedin twitter that's a big question and everybody has different engagement on these platforms for example i don't like to reply on the emails but i do love to respond on the linkedin uh, because i'm much more active there and i feel it's more uh, personalized but not everybody feels the same the other day i was talking to a friend of mine he says he only replies on the email so everybody is different now now this is again only possible using machine learning that we can predict that which person should be send uh, the message where exactly and where should be the follow up message be sent uh, and even with our campaigns uh, so many times we have so we have our own predictions as well as we generate ai customized predictions for others as well so we use our predictions to predict that which channel we should be reaching out to which customer and then where should be the follow up so a lot of times we get the recommendations like uh, customers uh, in texas they like to be reached out on email and if they don't reply on the email the second uh, approach should be done on the linkedin just just one very generic insight that i have from uh, doing so much analysis timing of outreach very crucial uh, people don't respond same times everybody responds so differently at different times i'm a morning person i like to respond in the morning a lot of people like to respond in the evening so so using uh, the the data that that you're having right now you're sending out your sales campaigns you're capturing what time they're opening up and you must have had some historical data so using your data you can easily predict that which people will open uh, the email at what time and then you send out email to them in such a way that the open rates are maximum the click rates are maximum the engagement is the highest according to the time they like to reply to so the timing of the outreach can easily be calculated okay super important thing and i did this with wwf uh, where i was working at world wildlife federation so we had this problem uh, there were people calling in uh, in the call care center and again this is a marketing problem not exactly a sales problem but it, it's very similar so people were calling into customer care and often we saw that after the call the donation dipped by 100% 150% uh, 
for a lot of people, not everybody, but for a lot of people. So I did this project where I wanted to understand that why the revenue is going down after every call. And the key component was that we were not able to match the personalities of people calling in uh, with the people who are taking in the phone call. So think of a very simple example. Uh, Mr. ABC is a senior citizen living in Texas. Okay, he's he's a quiet person. He lives in a ranch. He he needs more detail details to everything. He's not tech savvy, and he needs attention. He's uh, he has a hard time understanding things. He needs somebody who can be patient with him, who's empathetic with him. So he need and. And if I match him, if this person calls uh, client B, and if I match this person with one of our SDR, BDRs, uh, who's not so patient, who likes to speak fast, uh, who talks a lot about the tech, there's a, there's a huge disconnect. So by not understanding the personality of Mr. ABC, and by not matching the personality of uh, ABC with our SDR, BDR, what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of mismatch. And ultimately, it's not going to lead to a sales or a good customer experience for Mr. ABC. Uh, now, how can I predict the personality of Mr. ABC? Very simple. I have a lot of uh, information about Mr. ABC. Uh, and I can also collect the third party data as well uh, from Abacus, from a lot of companies. So I can easily predict the personality of Mr. ABC. Another example, uh, Mrs. XYZ, sorry, Miss XYZ. She's a busy executive. She's, she's, she's a, in a mid career. Uh, she runs a medium sized business in New York. Uh, and she really wants to connect with somebody who talks on point, speaks like uh, a business expert. So somebody like Spencer would be, would be a perfect fit for her. Uh, who's very tech oriented, uh, who speaks her language. So, so in that case, there is, there is an easy connection and there's more chances of sales happening. And we've seen this. We've done we've done extensive analysis on this one, and uh, our studies uh, uh, our studies came out with this number that every time you start predicting the personalities of your leads and you match them with appropriate SDR and BDRs, you see at least an increase of twenty one percent in sales. That's a huge number. Imagine you're making uh, hundred thousand dollar a month. Suddenly you're making $120,000 a month per SDR, per BDR, huge number, immediate gains. Uh, so, so last thing, uh, I want to talk about a few stats about AI machine learning in sales marketing. Uh, McKinsey came out with these numbers and then there was a research being done by Salesforce as well. And nearly all of them indicate that uh, the marketers and the sales uh, teams are investing more and more. So my question to everybody right now attending webinar is, um, are you investing in AI machine learning? Are you seeing the gains that you can get from AI machine learning? Because look, uh, uh, from just from the 2018 to 2020, 29% uh, uh, marketers were using in 2018 and now 84% are using it. And we work with so many sales and marketing teams. We still feel the sales and marketing teams are just touching the tip of the iceberg. There's so much left that the marketing and sales teams can be doing, but they don't have any idea what to do, how to do. Many of them are not collecting enough data. Many of them uh, aren't aware that implementation can be easy. And some of us even think that this is only possible for companies like Amazon's, Facebook's, Google's, Netflix. But I really want to emphasize that no, you don't need an uh, expensive team of data scientists, engineers to get the work done. You can start using simple platforms. You can start using open source libraries. You can even start using a platform like Cliently, which can give you a lot of customized AI predictions. But I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just trying to say that, please, uh, machine learning, AI should be a part of your sales and marketing. Uh, one last graph that I want to leave you with is uh, the benefits of personalization. Uh, look at the sales impact. This was a study conducted by IBM in 2019. And uh, what IBM did was it uh, surveyed some, some 345, uh, the VPs, the directors of sales. 
and this is the number it came out with uh, 5.63 immediate increase in sales revenue in just one year of using uh, machine learning ai in very simple applications and uh, the other kpi is customer satisfaction increased by 18.37 points uh, that, that's a huge number so with that i don't want you to enamor with the numbers uh, that's it from our side and with that uh, let me share the link of this uh, powerpoint presentation so that you can have a look at it and spencer if you don't mind can you share the calendly link of yours with everybody so that if anybody wants to understand uh, they have the, any specific case study you want to have our insights on it we are happy to give you a uh, free insights uh, happy to have a call with you to get you started on this journey or if you have any question comments we'll be happy to take it afterwards uh okay uh, thank you spencer for sharing the calendly link with that guys uh we are open to comments questions feedback anything that you want to discuss uh, we are happy to take them Okay, so we have a lot of things. Uh, kindly show an example where you or your company is using this uh, ML NLP. Okay, this act. This, so this question was posted much earlier, and we really showed a lot of examples. For example, uh, how we are deciding the outreach email time, like what time the email should be going out, and we're doing a lot of lead scoring as well. Um, and actually, the next week webinar is about the lead scoring, so we'll be touching on. or exactly uh using machine learning you can do lead scoring in an automated manner fashion uh so that you don't have to depend on your intuition uh i'll be happy i'll be happy uh, uh so so after this webinar i'll be sending you an email i'll be happy to share those uh, resource practices uh, materials on this one how do you approach data collection okay uh, good question how do you approach uh, data collection across different markets and or industries so spencer do you want to talk about how people are storing uh, databases data data points at various places and how to integrate them do you want to talk about it yeah so uh you know i'm not sure if this question is more getting into the science of it but i'll at least talk about how we see a lot of people doing it today uh what well, where we're going with it as well is a lot of times you have sources of data that are coming from multiple avenues your billing system your CRM uh your chat tool uh your customer um uh your ERP etc 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 and so having data is key because the more data that you can bring in from all of these different areas the smarter the machine learning can can be essentially and so with that when it has that information that's the nice part about machine learning what people are constantly doing with lead scoring and different things around that is they're creating they're basically coming up with assumptions they're coming up with assumptions that when somebody does this it's worth this many points if if we send we should send this email to this group etc however what machine learning is going to tell you and then come out with our artificial intelligence is what you should actually be doing based on a specific market or industry when all that data is coming together uh and so that's why it's so important that speaks to even some of the examples that Harsh and I spoke about earlier we're drilling down even to a specific lead because it's not only about a market or industry that they're in it may be the industry the person's job title it may be the location of where they are that all change the dynamic of how you interact with them uh but short answer in terms of data collection uh it's good to have the ability to sync that data whether it's coming from your marketing team that's setting that up uh and then outlaying it to your sales team uh but but that's really what's important in having that data sync all in together in one place and uh, spencer again this is very important right so right now uh, we are talking with a lot of companies and the very first requirement that we ask these companies is uh, we want the real time sync because your as i was mentioning the customer behavior is changing all the time so you want to be syncing your data real time with your machine learning pipelines so that the predictions are up to date up to date like you don't want to build a machine learning model and then put it to production after 3 months after 6 months when the behavior has changed so so that is one very important thing and this is the, uh, this is something i realized at the very starting of my career i was working for a grocery chain 
when I started out and what I saw was we used to build models and we used to implement those models for next one year, two years and the performance uh, was dipping down, was consistently going down. And that's the only, the only reason is uh, you need to sync your data real time, uh, wherever your data sits, Salesforce, Pipedrive, uh, wherever that sits. It has to uh, sync in real time and you need to be doing machine learning, AI predictions real time on that data. Uh, guys, uh, uh, any other any other thing you want to discuss? Uh, anything else? Uh, also, Spencer, do you want to talk about how, uh, like, you talked to a lot of SDRs and BDRs, business development representatives, sales development representatives. What do you think where the industry stands today? I mean, I I see the numbers all the time, the adoption being increasing, but. Let's say if a company is between 50 to 200 employees, do you see a lot of AI adoption in sales and marketing teams? How's, how's that going right now for the sales teams? So I only see it in a few sectors. Uh, I see it mainly in companies of that size uh, in tech companies. And why is that? Because tech companies usually are the first to invest in other tech. Uh, and that puts them at a big advantage because uh, they're using these multiple tools and they're bringing that information together uh, to bring in AI. But AI and machine learning is getting more and more accessible. It's becoming less expensive. However, I'm still seeing a lot of smaller companies that are not using it. And that's no different than not using other technologies that have been out there now for a few years, like automation or things of that nature. It puts you at a disadvantage. And it's really a double disadvantage because these smaller companies are already trying to get their name out there when it may not be as prominent as some of those bigger. So we're slowly seeing more AI machine learning adopted, uh, but honestly, not nearly as much as I think it should be. Part of that might be with the technology, again, becoming more accessible, becoming less expensive, which it really is uh, happening over the last six months to a year specifically. Uh, but that's sort of what I'm, I'm seeing overall. Uh, that you're not seeing that as much in companies, 50 to 250, et cetera, uh, maybe not even 500 to 1,000. You're seeing really only the enterprise companies that are using it to their advantage uh, and, and putting smaller companies at a bigger disadvantage when they don't need to be. And Spencer, since uh, you're from a sales background, I'm from operations, uh, data science background. When we started having the conversation before I joined you, you always laid emphasis on uh, getting insights from the data recommendations in a very human consumable way. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when I started explaining you things, I remember you told me, uh, Harsha, I don't understand anything. You're speaking language of a data scientist. So can you, can you also talk us about how sales teams uh, may not have the enough data aptitude, but if we can provide them in a very human consumable way, that would be much better uh, and that is probably the major hurdle for most of the sales teams. Uh, yeah. We have the right people giving them information in a digestible way. No, that's that's a really good point. So I talked about like, you know, a lot of these companies that are smaller are not using it when the technology is becoming more accessible. But here's another thing. Even with the technology that's out there, a lot of it, most of it today, you need essentially uh, a team of data scientists to be able to uh, help you understand that information and process it. And it's always a moving target. I know Harsh mentioned this a few minutes ago where the data is constantly changing. So it's not like you can you know, hire a consultant uh, as a data scientist and say, all right, we're good. They've got to constantly update what they're learning from that data. And so with the, you know, with the direction of AI and machine learning becoming more accessible, it's not only about accessible in terms of smaller companies can use it, but they can use it without having to get those other resources like full-time data scientists and those types of roles, analysts on staff, because actually a lot of times those roles are way more expensive than technology itself. And so the ability to be able to consume that data and be able to do something with it uh, without having that barrier of having somebody that knows data science or an analyst to process it, and also the delay that that has in terms of putting that information to become actionable to your sales and marketing team uh, is really starting to change. Absolutely, I agree with you, and uh, I have seen this uh, a lot. Uh, so, guys, with that, uh, uh, this there's one person typing a question, so we'll just wait for it. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, the question is: Can you elaborate on how you are building pipelines for data collection, for marketing research client commitments, where you're building marketing strategies for them? Okay, so. 
what I think you're, you're sort of getting at here is how do you funnel all the data into one place? So when you're really talking from a, like a, like strictly a marketing perspective and things that go on beneath the surface, there's tools like Segment, um, HubSpot does some of this. Uh, if you're talking about making this consumable in a, in a way where your salespeople can do something actionable with it, um, there's not a lot out there yet. Uh, in fact, that's something that we're looking to work on behind the scenes because we do think that's a problem. We think that marketers can put this information and set it up together, uh, but it's not accessible for salespeople to then see it, consume it, do something with it. Uh, but in terms of you know how you, we would suggest doing that is you need to have a system where all that data can sync together and then you can see it in a consumable way. And what I mean by that is you might have 10 just as a very simple example, let's say three different parameters that are important to you. You might want to know where that person is located, when the last time they engaged, and uh, are they on a trial with your software. Now, all that information may be coming in different places. The engagement might be in the email. The trial may be you know, tied to uh, something like Intercom or Drift or your billing system. Uh, uh, the industry might be in your CRM. Who knows? And so being able to funnel that all together um, is, not, is, is one thing. CRMs can do some of that but they don't give it to you in a way where I can literally create a segment to show me that information because based on that, I'm going to do a certain action, probably what AI or machine learning will help tell me uh, because of that. Uh, yes, yeah, so so that is what we're exactly trying to do. Uh, so wherever the data set sits, uh, various CRM, various everywhere, Salesforce, uh, wherever it sits, pipe drive, so we bring it all together and this is what we're working on right now because we are seeing a huge demand for it. So bring all the data together at one place and then we are trying to give you the predictions end to end customer journey. So for example, answering questions like, uh, should I be emailing this person or not? What time should I be emailing this person? Is this person going to convert or not? And once he joins the company, uh, is the person satisfied or not? When is the person not satisfied? What is the customer happy about? What is the customer not happy about? Is my customer going to churn or not? What is going to be the customer lifetime value of this customer? Uh, if the customer is churning, how can I stop that action? Or if the customer is going to downgrade, what, what can I do to not let that happen? Should I be upselling something? Should I be cross-selling something? So all these questions, uh, so we, we are striving to be a platform where the, the database from everywhere sits in at one place and then we give predictions uh, on end-to-end -end customer journey. So that is what our goal is. Uh, uh, we've been making good progress on that one. Uh, we have a platform which gives a lot of predictions. We are working, as Spencer said, behind the scenes uh, to sync the data everywhere, from everywhere to just one place, real-time sync, give the real-time predictions. So that is where we are headed. And it's very exciting for us, honestly, uh, because to do the similar amount of work, any company uh, would at least hire a big team of data scientists, a big team of engineers. And even then, it's very difficult to achieve uh, because you have a lot of things to do. Uh, it takes time. It takes time to establish the good practices. So, so that is where we are headed. Uh, exciting times. Okay, uh, there's there's something more coming up in the question. I hope we've answered that question. Okay, okay. Yeah, and we're happy to you know chat again. Uh, reach out to us directly um, as well. But yeah, do you want to wrap it up, um, Harsh? Sure. So uh, so guys, we have uh, weekly webinars. Uh, you can follow our cliently page. We have very informative webinars, uh, and I promise uh, we never try to sell anything. We just want to spread data science awareness. We just want to uh, tell people what are the best practices in sales marketing. Uh, so, so with that, guys, we like to wrap it up. Uh, you'll see an email from me or Spencer with the recording of the webinar. Uh, and that's it. See you guys uh, next week. Same time, 1 p.m. Thanks, guys. So, new interesting topic okay bye guys uh good evening <laughs>